You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. So Fallout 4 has a ton of different enemy types. You have everything from creatures like Deathclaws and Mirelurks, to more humanoid enemies like Gunners and Super Mutants. There are also some formidable robots like Mr. Gutsies, Assaultrons, and Sentrybots as well. Today, I want to go over some of what I think are the strongest enemies the player can encounter in Fallout 4. Now, before we get into this video, we will not be including specific legendary variants. That said, the vast majority of the creatures you will see here can have a legendary variant. Um, these will obviously be stronger than their standard non-legendary variant. Uh, I would say that if you encounter a legendary version of any of the creatures on this list, you're going to be in for a real fight. I've also tried to combine a variety of both creatures, robots, and more humanoid type enemies here. Just keep in mind that the strength of human type enemies is based on what weapons they have equipped. Uh, the better the weapon, the more deadly these types of enemies can be. But without further ado, these will be the top 10 toughest, hardest, and strongest enemies in Fallout 4, and yes, this includes all available DLC. Number 10. The Glowing Cave Cricket. So, this is an entry that I'm sure will surprise a couple of people. Now, it's true that these enemies aren't going to withstand a lot of bullets, but they can be difficult for the player to shoot due to their erratic movement. Plus, for their size, they also have an impressive amount of health, as well as an impressive amount of damage potential. Their defenses are also fairly decent, and they typically always travel in groups with some other Cave Cricket variants. The Glowing Cave Cricket in particular is simply the strongest Cave Cricket from the Nuka World DLC. It's a level 60 enemy with about 750 health. Again, for a creature of this size, that amount of health is pretty impressive. Unlike most other small varmint enemies, the Glowing Cave Cricket can prove to be formidable. That said, you may find that crippling this enemy's legs makes it much easier to fight, and it significantly decreases its speed. You may find that the kneecapper effect is really useful here, as you can quickly slow down a Cave Cricket and greatly impair their movement in the process. A group of Cave Crickets can mess up the player's health bar if they let a group of them get too close. Make sure you attack the stronger ones first, as they have the potential to deal the most damage to you. Thankfully, these creatures only appear in the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4, and despite what you may be seeing in this video, you won't have to worry about them attacking you in the Commonwealth. Number 9. The Super Mutant Warlord Originally, I would have included the Ancient Behemoth on this list. Now, that's not to say that the Ancient Behemoth is weak or anything, but I would say that the player is much more likely to run into one of these than they are to run into a really powerful Behemoth. For the most part, Super Mutant Warlords are like your standard Super Mutant, though they may have better armor and will usually also have better weapons. The big thing though is that they have a massive amount of health and can take a lot of punishment before finally going down. To give you some idea, the Super Mutant Warlord has about 1535 health and is a level 68 enemy. It's very possible that the player will need to unload a significant number of bullets into a Super Mutant Warlord's face before it will die. Um, Super Mutant Warlords appear sooner than Mythic Deathclaws, yet somehow manage to have even more health than a Mythic Deathclaw. However, like all humanoid type enemies, Super Mutants are formidable depending on what weapons that they have equipped. Uh, I found that the most dangerous ones seem to have energy weapons that are able to bypass a lot of the player's energy resistance and deal some damage. That said, it's also possible for these guys to carry weaker weapons, so you may get lucky. Um, ultimately, Warlords can come in legendary variants, meaning in addition to having a massive amount of health, they can mutate and become even stronger than before. But again, it all depends on the weapons they spawn with. Um, from my experience, i found that Super Mutants with miniguns, missile launchers, or some energy weapons can be kind of difficult. Um, others, not so much. Just bring some good guns and invest in the right perks, and you should be okay. Number 8. The Novatron Eliminator so, the Novatron Eliminator is from the Nuka World DLC and is an essentially an improved version of the Assaultron Dominator from Fallout 4's base game. Just like regular Assaultrons, the Novatron Eliminator sports relatively high attack speed coupled with decent damage output. 
Some Assaultrons also sport head lasers, which when fully charged, can be deadly for players with both low and even high energy resistance. Uh, the Novatron Eliminator, along with the Assaultron Dominator, also has a cloaking ability, making it difficult to actually shoot. For players that rely heavily on vats for dealing most of their damage, this cloaking ability can be a serious problem. That said, as far as weaknesses are concerned, Assaultrons typically don't have a lot of armor or health, so you may be able to take them out with a well-placed shot from a hidden position. Otherwise, if you bring a reasonably powerful weapon, you could take these guys out pretty quickly. Um, as far as the specifics go, the Novatron Eliminator is a level 66 enemy with about 640 health or so. Um, while this is fairly high, keep in mind that your best weapons will probably be upgraded and will be capable of dealing enough damage to take these things out. Just try to look for openings if you do enter direct combat. Otherwise, try to take these guys out with stealth. Novatron Eliminators appear exclusively in the Galactic Zone of Nuka World. I would also recommend that you keep an eye out for Assaultron Dominators as well, even if they are slightly weaker. Number 7. The Gunner Brigadier So, the Gunner Brigadier is the strongest gunner variant in Fallout 4. Unlike most regular gunners, the Gunner Brigadier has about 1,300 health and utilizes stealth boys during combat. Um, they also seem to spawn with a lot of heavy combat armor as well, so if you're looking for that stuff, killing Gunner Brigadiers might be your best option. That said, you may find that you'll want these armor pieces at lower levels, and you really only see Gunner Brigadiers when your character is around level 90 or so. Now, the lethality of Gunner Brigadiers, just like any other humanoid enemy type, is primarily based on the weapon that it's actually using. At the very least, expect either combat rifles, assault rifles, or plasma weapons here. And as long as these enemies aren't using rocket launchers or fat man launchers, you should be able to tank hits from a Gunner Brigadier's weapon pretty easily while you're wearing power armor. The problem here is mostly just the stealth boy, which can make targeting and vats fairly difficult if not impossible. Uh, your best option here in this scenario is to try to keep your eye on the Brigadier as best as you can and just shoot at them when you see them. Make no mistake though, these guys can be pretty tough, especially when you consider that you're probably not going to be fighting a Gunner Brigadier on its own. You may find that it's best to take out lower level Gunners so you can tackle this guy one on one, or you can wait for his stealth boy to deactivate quickly target him or her in vats, and simply unload. It's unlikely you'll see very many of these enemies, as you need to be level 96 or higher to encounter one. Uh, this very high level enemy is beatable as long as you're prepared, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much unless you plan on playing well beyond level 100. Number 6. The Dusky Yao Guai The Dusky Yao Guai is a variant of the standard Yao Guai from Fallout 4's base game. Yao Guai are essentially just bears that have high health, the ability to stagger the player with their attacks, and they also deal an impressive amount of damage. Early on in the game, Yao Guai are pretty formidable, especially since they can easily cripple the player's limbs when they attack. They're also strong enough early on to take quite a number of hits before going down. Now, later on in Fallout 4, you'll find that Yao Guai are still pretty dangerous, but they don't have quite as much damage resistance as many other enemies you may encounter in the game. They also don't have a lot of the armor, like your Deathclaws, Mirelurks, or even Rad Scorpions, and that makes them a little easier to deal with. Even still, it's recommended that you have power armor or the means to take them out from a distance, as they can be very difficult to deal with. The Dusky Yao Guai in particular is a level 76 enemy with about 1,175 health. This is fairly high for any enemy in the game, but I think you'll also find that the low damage resistance may make crippling these types of enemies fairly easy. Like creatures, the Dusky Yao Guai is very vulnerable to the kneecapper effect, and since Yao Guai don't have ranged attacks, crippling all four legs can prove fatal. You should be able to encounter these enemies throughout the Commonwealth. The nice thing is that you will usually encounter only one of these things at a time, making them much easier to fight. Just bring some good weapons, and you probably won't have too many problems. Also, try to avoid getting hit to avoid that stagger. Number 5. The Death Skull Rad Scorpion 
The Death Skull Rad Scorpion is a variant of the regular Rad Scorpions that can be found throughout Fallout 4. As is evident by their appearance, Rad Scorpions are essentially large mutations of your regular Scorpion. Rad Scorpions have a wide variety of combat abilities, which include burrowing, as well as the traditional melee and poison-based melee attacks that deal damage over time. You may also find that Rad Scorpions move fairly quickly, which can make them somewhat difficult to hit. Out of all of the Rad Scorpions, the Death Skull Rad Scorpion is the strongest. It's a level 64 enemy that appears with about 1,115 health and some fairly respectable damage and energy resistance. Though between the two, it's actually a little bit more vulnerable to energy weapons. For the most part, your best bet for taking these out is to shoot them in the face. Alternatively, you could also use weapons with the penetrating effect, which will help ignore some of the Rad Scorpions' inherently high damage and energy resistance. Typically, Rad Scorpions are fairly rare outside of the Glowing Sea. Now, that's not to say that they don't spawn outside the Glowing Sea at all, but you're going to find that you are more likely to encounter these types of enemies while you're traversing the Glowing Sea, and this can prove to be pretty stressful for players that already have insufficient resistance to radiation. While Death Skull Rad Scorpions can be encountered earlier, they are usually encountered at higher levels. I would say you should start seeing them around level 50 or so, and that they will become more prevalent the higher you level. As long as you're prepared to deal with enemies that have a lot of armor, Death Skull Rad Scorpions shouldn't be too difficult for you to take down. Number 4. The Nuka Lurk Queen So the Nuka Lurk Queen is a more powerful version of the Mire Lurk Queen from the base game. As such, you will find that the Nukalurk Queen, along with other Nukalurks in general, share some of the same attacks as their regular Mirelurk brethren. For the most part though, Nukalurks usually have more health and deal a lot more damage when they attack you. And to give you some idea, the standard Mirelurk Queen is a level 50 enemy with about a thousand health. The Nukalurk Queen is a level 64 enemy with about 1,500 health. So you're getting about the same resistances, it's just that the Nukalurk Queen has about 50% more health. Just like the standard Mirelurk Queen, the Nukalurk Queen uses a combination of physical attacks, shoots acid at the player which deals damage over time, and fires eggs at the player which can hatch, spawning these annoying Nukalurk spawn which will also attack the player. Now, while Nukalurk spawn are fairly weak, they can prove to be annoying in large numbers. My recommendation for taking out queens is to aim at their head and just mercilessly unload. Um, eventually, the queen should stagger and you can keep firing until the beast goes down. Fighting Mirelurk queens is usually pretty easy if you bring some hard-hitting rifles, pistols, or other weapons with decent fire rate. As far as I know, there is only one Nukalurk queen in Fallout 4, and that's located at the World of Refreshment bottling plant from the Nuka World DLC. Otherwise, you will encounter the standard Mirelurk Queen variant, which is a little easier to take down. Number 3. The Mythic Deathclaw So Deathclaws have been in all of the Fallout games since the franchise's inception. In Fallout 4, Deathclaws can be pretty formidable as they can pick the player up and throw them, even while you're wearing power armor. Now, typically, if you're going to be going up against a Deathclaw, it's best to bring power armor or some guns that hit really, really hard. Unlike many of the other larger enemies like Behemoths or Mirelurk Queens, Deathclaws are extremely agile and are capable of attacking quickly. In addition to their impressive speed, they also have decent armor on most parts of their body, even on the head. Uh, Deathclaws also have attacks that can drain the player's action points, making run away, using vats, and performing power attacks very difficult. In general, it's best to take out a Deathclaw from a distance before they get too close. The best way to take down Deathclaws is to either cripple them or unload on their only vulnerable spot, which is their belly. Shooting this area will deal significantly more damage than either attacking their legs, arms, tail, or head. Mythic Deathclaws in particular can appear as early as level 75 and have about 1,360 health. This is almost three times more health than your standard Deathclaw, and they also possess superior resistances as well. I would say that your best bet is to use ballistic weapons here, as Deathclaws have inherently high energy resistance. Uh, either a powerful rifle or pistol should suffice. 
Deathclaws are pretty uncommon in most places, though you will occasionally encounter them during quests. Mythic Deathclaws are usually encountered much later on in a playthrough, and by that point you'll probably have weapons that will cripple their legs, rendering them immobile and incapable of fighting back. Number 2. The Venomous Angler Anglers are creatures that resemble something that you might see in the deep ocean. They have a large light protrusion that mimics flowers that grow in the Far Harbor Island. Um, it's not uncommon to be walking past some glowing flowers, only to have an angler attack. Now, anglers are capable of both ranged as well as melee attacks, and they typically move fairly fast. Oddly, they also shoot an acid attack that lights the player on fire as well. The Venomous variant in particular also has poison attacks which deal damage over time, making an already powerful enemy that much more powerful. The Venomous Angler is a level 51 creature with 1,750 health, and to put this amount of health in perspective, this is more than a Mythic Deathclaw, a Death Skull Rad Scorpion, and even a Mirelurk Queen. While your damage resistance isn't quite as high as some of those enemies, the sheer amount of health here at such a low level can prove to be very formidable for players at about level 50. Otherwise, there isn't really a whole lot to these particular enemies. Like Deathclaws, you'll find that your best option for taking them down is to use ballistic weapons as opposed to energy weapons, as they have fairly decent energy resistance. Number 1. The Enraged Fog Crawler. In my opinion, this creature might just be one of, if not the most formidable enemies in Fallout 4. The Enraged Fog Crawler is a variant of the Standard Fog Crawler, which are creatures that are partially based off of shrimp and kind of look like praying mantises. Typically, Fog Crawlers have heavy armor, high health, and typically make use of mostly melee attacks coupled with poison to help boost the amount of damage per second that they can inflict. Overall, Fog Crawlers can deal a ton of damage and also take a bunch of damage as well. The only disadvantage that a fog crawler has is that they don't have any ranged attacks, which makes them ineffective at fighting provided one of their legs is crippled. So if you have weapons with the kneecapper effect, they may prove useful here. The enraged fog crawler in particular is a level 75 enemy with over 2000 health. Keep in mind too that the enraged version has a massive amount of damage resistance, meaning it can easily tank most ballistic type weapons fairly easily. If the kneecapper effect is unavailable to you, your best bet is to use weapons like the weaponized Nuka-Cola Quantum Paddle Ball or weapons with the Penetrator Legendary Weapon Effect. That way you're able to bypass some of the high resistances or the Fog Crawler's armor. Even still, I would say that it's unlikely you'll be able to one-shot these with a Gauss Rifle from a hidden position. Your best bet is to cripple them and then unload with powerful weapons, preferably from a distance. Fog Crawlers were added with the Far Harbor DLC for Fallout 4 and are usually only seen on Far Harbor Island. Just make sure you're prepared if you encounter this enraged version. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.